Hi, my name's Grant. I work for Schwalbe Tires UK and I've been with the company for seven years now. Today's video, we're gonna look at air pressure. First of all, we're gonna discuss why does a tire lose air? Obviously, the first thing will be a puncture, but all pneumatic tire systems will lose air periodically over time. We have a number of tubes available in our range. The highest air retaining tube that we do is our air plus inner tube which is then followed by our butyl and aerothan inner tubes. And lastly, our extra light inner tubes. These have a thinner side wall, so we'll lose air a bit quicker, similar to that of a latex tube. A good example of how you can see air loss in pneumatic systems is a party balloon. You can have these lingering out around after a party and you'll see they'll stay inflated for about a week or so, but eventually lose air without being punctured. Tubeless systems will also lose air periodically. This can be down to the quality of the setup, the age of the tires and how the tires were mounted, but we'll cover this in another video. So what is the correct pressure to run? Different types of riding require different pressures, from your everyday cyclist and commuter rider to your performance and racing rider. Too little tyre pressure is probably the biggest issue here. This can cause a number of problems. As you can see here, low tyre pressure can cause uneven wear to the tyre. And as you can see with the profile of this tyre, the side tread is much heavily worn in comparison to the centre of the tyre. Also, lower pressures can damage the sidewalls of the tyre. As you can see here, it's damaged the reflective strip and the sidewalls become quite fatigued. This gives you a greater risk of pinch flats, it can hamper your steering, and in extreme cases can actually damage your rim. Most noticeably, with lower tyre pressures, this is going to increase your rolling resistance, making it harder work for you to ride. We feel it's better to be closer to the stated max pressure of your tyres rather than being too low. Also, just to note, using your thing, fingers and thumbs as a pressure gauge isn't always the most accurate, especially in the case of more puncture resistant tyres here like our Marathon Plus. As you can see, with the stiffer tyre, squeezing the tyre, it doesn't really give you much indication of what pressure's in there and you'll probably just think it's inflated when actually it's probably quite low pressure if it's been left for some time. We recommend checking the pressure of your tyres using an accurate pressure gauge, much like that of our Air Max Pro. It's worth checking your pressures every four weeks, unless you have something like the Air Plus inner tubes, which have better air retention. We recommend these are checked every eight weeks. If you're still unsure, we recommend that you start somewhere in the middle of the recommended pressure range on the tyre and find out what's comfortable for you. A little bit more pressure if you want it to roll a little bit faster, but if you'd like a bit more comfort, let a little bit of air out. Here's an example of the difference of how tyre volume can be affected by pressure as well. Both these tyres are inflated to 1.5 bar or 22 psi. And as you can see, when I apply pressure for the tyre on this bar, it will bottom out on this 30 mil road tyre. Whereas the mountain bike tyre, which is much higher volume at the same pressure, struggles to bottom out due to the higher volume. Moving on to racers and performance riders, their requirements differ slightly. They're looking for the best compromise in rolling resistance, dampening and traction. Lower pressures will increase grip and traction, but can increase the risk of punctures. Higher pressures will reduce rolling resistance, but can slightly reduce traction of the tire. Gravity riders are looking to run as low a pressure as possible. This will allow them to have the best traction that they need, but not too low, because otherwise it can attract punctures or even burping of the tire. XC riders often run slightly higher pressure just to help reduce rolling resistance. Unfortunately, there's no magic setting or one pressure that works for everyone. The pressures can be affected by the style of riding that you do, the size tyre that you're running, the terrain you're on, and even rider weight. 
Fortunately for mountain bike riders, on our website we have a useful tool which is our pressure prof. You can enter in the information of you and your bike to give you an idea of what sort of pressures you should be running. Road riders are also looking for the best compromise in tyre pressure. Their needs differ from that of a mountain bike rider slightly due to the volume of tyre that they're using. Road pressures, we're starting to see a dropping now as tyre sizes increase. Lower pressures also don't always mean an increase in rolling resistance. With a slightly lower pressure, the tyre can deform better on the terrain it's rolling on. It improves the traction on it and actually power transfer. So it can actually reduce some of the rolling resistance. Fun fact, some of the Paris-Roubaix riders, the lighter riders who are using 30 mil tyres will go as low as 3.5 bar or approximately 50 psi on their tyres. Gravel riders will also go a little bit lower like that of a mountain bike due to the higher volume of their tyre. Comfort can mean you're a little bit faster as it will help reduce fatigue as well. We recommend at this level of riding that you check your pressures every ride. Ultimately, when setting your tyre pressures, the things to keep in mind are a balance of comfort, puncture protection and rolling resistance. If you have any questions, Please feel free to comment below.